I think we also need to make a very clear distinction between discrimination and people that are just inclined to gravitate towards different careers and different focuses. There's a big difference between women being forced out of tech and women being not as compelled to enter into tech careers as men. But yeah, when well, that, that, that tech, the tech issue is a really interesting one for a couple of reasons. I mean, one is that, of course, high tech basically developed after the playing field for men and women was more or less leveled. I mean, that happened in the 1970s. And despite that, there aren't any near, anywhere near as many women in tech. There's far more women in caring professions. And you see that particularly in Scandinavia, where they've done everything they can to, equal, to equalize the playing field. It's 20 to 1 female to male nurses and 20 to 1 male to female engineers. Explain that if you could, the Scandinavia yeah, well, issue, because it's very interesting yeah, what yeah, they've done yeah. over there and what the results have been. Yeah, well, imagine that there are two reasons that people differ. There, there are more than two, but just imagine for the time being that there are two. One is for environmental reasons, cultural reasons, and the other is for biological reasons. What happens if you flatten out the environmental reasons, which is what's happened in Scandinavia, is you maximize the biological differences. You don't get rid of them, you maximize them. And so what's happened in Scandinavia is that men and women are more different from a temperament and personality perspective and also in terms of their interests. They're more different in Scandinavia than they are anywhere else in the world. Now, what have they done to try to flatten things out, as you say? Well, they've transformed their social policies so that men and women have as close to equal opportunity, say, as any society has managed. But that hasn't produced the hope for equality of outcome. Quite, quite the contrary. In many situations, it's exaggerated it. And you could say that, that that's actually okay, is that what you, want, what you want is to have a society where the genuine differences between people are free to manifest themselves. So, for example, if you, if you have three or four kids, say, the kids are going to be uh, different from one another genetically. That's why they're not identical twins. They differ genetically. And if you set the environment up so that each child is supportive, the children actually turn out quite differently. Now, if you're an absolute brute and you beat them and you abuse them, then they'll all turn out the same because there's tremendous environmental influence on them then. But if you, if you form an individual relationship with each of them and allow their strengths to manifest themselves as they will in, in, a, in a supportive environment, then the kids are going to turn out very different. And so a free society is actually one that, that produces massively unequal outcomes because it allows the genuine differences between people to manifest themselves. These people who are pushing equity, which is equality of outcome, that's what the word equity codes for, by the way, equality of outcome and not equality of opportunity. I don't know what in the world they do with, with regards to the fact that a very large number of professions are, you know, high quality, high, high pay professions are female dominated. Physicians, for example, psychologists, um, any, any of the disciplines that have to do with human care are almost inevitably dominated by women, and that's increasingly the case. Is it, we're supposed to stop that? Is that also a sign of oppression? We're going to force women to do things they're not interested in? Well, there's also a very disingenuous way of framing it here in America, where people consistently, even the President of the United States, Obama, was talking about income inequality. And the way they frame income inequality, they talk about the 79 cents to the dollar. But what they don't discuss is that we're talking about completely different careers. We're not. They, yeah. The way they frame it, they, they frame it as if two people are working side by side. One is a man, one is a woman. They're both doing the same job. The man makes a dollar, the woman makes 79 cents. Yeah. That is not the case. Well, it's typical of ideological conversation because what happens technically like imagine that a given we talked about poverty a few minutes ago and you said well there's there's many many reasons that one person might have more money than another um, there are many many reasons why women might make less money on average than men there there are small businesses that women run for example make far less money than men's the small businesses that men run but that's partly because a lot of women run their businesses part-time because they have kids it's also partly because men do all the horrible, dangerous jobs, the ones where there's a high chance of dying. Men are much more likely to work outside. Um, men are much more likely to move in, in pursuit of a career opportunity. There are lots of reasons that, that men and women differ in terms of their income. But if you're an ideologue, you can only handle one variable. Oh, men and women measured on mass don't have the same incomes. Therefore, the system is corrupt. Right. Jesus, how, how much thinking does it take to come up with a with a theoretical scenario like that. It's so boneheaded and it just runs, it just pushes the ideological, um, uh, it just pushes the ideology forward with no thought. Now as a professor, why is this sort of objective reasoning and really uh, 
absolutely honest assessment of this situation. Why is this so rare amongst professors? Why is this so rare in universities? Why is this such an unusual subject? Well, I think the reason is is that when, when people first encounter a complex topic, like income differences, it's, it's like, imagine you were drawing a map of a territory, and you don't know the territory very well. The first thing you do is just roughly sketch out the shapes of the continents. And maybe you're wrong, like the early European maps of North America. You know, you kind of get one coastline right, and you guess in the rest. It's blurry and gray. And then, as you investigate more and more, your picture of the situation becomes higher and higher and higher and higher in resolution. It's hard to go from a low-resolution representation to a high-resolution representation. And ideologies are low-resolution representations. So, the thing about a low-resolution representation is it looks like it covers everything. But it doesn't. The closer you look, the more details there are. You know, if you get a three-year-old to draw a helicopter, they put a, like a little cross on the top and a circle and a stick and another circle, and that's the helicopter. Well, you know when you look at it that it's a helicopter. But no one would expect that thing to fly. If you want to change that into a real model of a helicopter, you have to increase your focus and concentration on every single element of the entity. And that takes a tremendous amount of cognitive effort. And sometimes you don't even know what you don't know about something. You know, I, I could say, well, there are 50 reasons why men and women's income differ. Well, that doesn't mean you, I can say all 50 of those differences. And each of those 50 differences are fragmentable into maybe another dozen categories each. Maybe there's 600 reasons why men and women's salary um, differ. But you have to spend a tremendous amount of time paying attention and thinking to build your model of reality into that level of resolution. And basically what you do is default to temperamentally um, influenced ideologies. They give you a one-bit answer to everything. Why are men and women, why do men and women's salaries differ? Oppression. It's always the same thing, and it makes, it makes you feel like you know something. And people like that because they don't like the, the feeling that there's something they don't know. They don't like to be in chaos. That's basically chaos. They like to be in order, and order is where you know everything. 